So let's move to one of the other uh, big developments over the past few years uh, in pancreatic neuroendocontumors, and that's the use of, uh, of molecularly targeted agents, which I, I guess in technically somatostatin analogs are one. Uh, another uh, agent uh, that has uh, increasingly been used and is approved for pancreatic neuroendocontumors is the mTOR inhibitor Everolimus. Uh, and uh, Rod, I know you were involved in some of the early studies of Everolimus from yes. the outset, so it would be great to, to hear your perspective on, on, on how this drug has worked and, and how it's been for you. Well, at the outset, it was, it was noticed quite coincidentally in patients taking it as immunosuppressant for other purposes who had syndromes where part of the syndrome did include a, a pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor, that there was apparent suppression of, of this tumor. And so we actually just tried it. A group of us were, were given the agent and said, can you just try this for you know, phase one for just not just any type of efficacy? And we made a waterfall plot, and we actually had more responders right out of the gate than we had progression. So that gave us a hint that perhaps there was a signal. So we then began conducting an organized trial, which was RADIANT-1, which stands for RAD-001, which was the original designation for Everolimus, in advanced neuroendocrine tumors. And in RADIANT-1, we took patients that had all progressed on chemotherapy. And so it was a, it was a fairly desperate group of patients that were largely at the end of their rope. They may have had liver-directed therapy, they'd had chemotherapy, and despite this, they were progressing. And so there was no uh, uh, blind it arm in it. We just gave everybody the agent uh, open label. And we had an agreement that if a patient was already on a somatostatin analog for any purpose, when uh, they came to the trial, they would remain on it. And if they were not, we would not start such an agent, but we would continue to track how they did without it. And I was very gratified. Uh, every patient that I put in this trial who was formerly progressing stabilized. And that was a definite message to me that we had a signal here. And uh, curiously, when we looked at uh, both the uh, time to progression and survival, we actually did see a difference with the addition of the somatostatin analog in that the survival was, was much longer in patients who were receiving Everolimus with the somatostatin analog and time to progression in the combination hadn't been reached. Now, as we'll discuss later on, when we decided to then do a phase three randomized prospective double blind trial, um, that didn't bear out. So the Radiant One study <laughs> yeah. in, uh, in, uh, pan in pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, uh, the patients who were previously on the somatostatin analog stayed on. They remained on it. Uh, and those who were not received Everolimus alone. alone. And we did not begin this somatostatin analog at any point in the therapy. Uh, so this was not a randomized study. No, it was uh, not. So the difference may have been due to patient selection. It may have been due to the effect of the somatostatin analog. Could have easily been due to the way that uh, the patients had been behaving before.